You can keep moving from place to place, but it's not going to change the fact that you murdered my daughter. You can think what you like. I have nothing to say to you, sir. You smug bastard. What's going on here? Nothing that concerns you, Mr. Snyder. Just back off. We're finished here. No, we're not. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> That's it! I'm calling the police. No! I told you this doesn't concern you. Just stay out of it. Why are you putting up with this? This isn't your fight! Are you finished? I thought this would make me feel better, but it doesn't. Because beating you up is not going to bring me back my Annie. Quit gawking. The show's over. Dr. Oliver, wait, wait, what was that all about? It's, it's none of your business. Look, if you're in some kind of trouble because of a case back in Dallas, and I'm the one that brought you to Oakdale, then, yeah, I think it kind of is my business. I'm not in any trouble, okay? Not here, not there, not anywhere. Well, then, why did that guy say you murdered his daughter? Why do you think? Oh, that's right, you don't think. He's a grieving father who lost his only child, that's why. How did she die? Are we suddenly not speaking the same language? I said it was none of your business. Look, Dr. I'm not going to discuss another patient with you. Not now or any time in the future. So get lost. You know, you have a real problem with answering to people, don't you? I mean, you get really defensive when your back is to the wall. It's not to the wall. It's to you. Leave this alone, Mr. Snyder. I mean it. Are you all right, Dr. Oliver? I'm fine. Would you like me to take a look? You look like you're in pain. I said I'm fine. Just go pretend to do your job somewhere else. place. No, it's not as big as I thought. It would be. Yeah, I bet you thought that I'd have someone open my door for me. What do you want? About earlier at the Lakeview. What about it? I want you to forget what you saw. <laughs> well, not to sound like you, but no, it's the blind guy, not me. Just, you know, don't mention it to anyone, okay? It didn't happen. What are you saying? Is there some truth in what that guy was saying about you? Do I think I'm a murderer? No, I do not. But it doesn't stop false accusations from embarrassing the hospital unnecessarily. You really think that I believe you care about that? I would hope so. Well, I don't. I think there's something more to this. And I think there must be some truth to that story. Otherwise, you wouldn't be afraid of it. I'm asking you for a simple favor. To keep my mouth shut. No, I can do that. Thank you. On one condition. Tell me the truth about what happened to that man's daughter. I told you Dennis Judd is a man who lost his only daughter. He's having trouble getting over it. How? How did she die? It was a brain tumor. It was a terminal case. The tumor was located in a place that was virtually impossible to reach through surgery. But you tried. I made it very clear to the Judds that it was a risky operation, that it had a very small chance of success, but if we didn't operate, she was going to die in the next couple of weeks. And I take it the operation wasn't a success? Well, it depends on what you call success. I gave the girl a year of life that she wouldn't have otherwise had. A year? But then why did the guy attack you? Why did he call you a murderer? And why didn't you defend yourself? What would you have me do, Mr. Snyder? Hmm? Fight him? Risk hurting my hands by punching him in the face? The guy lost his only daughter. She was six years old when she died. Can you even imagine that? You think that guy would have heard anything I had to say to him? Do you know what I think? No, and I don't particularly care to. I think you feel you deserve that attack. That shows me how little you actually understand. <laughs> Does it? I'd make the same call again. I know that. But you feel that you failed. And you can't handle that. You don't know anything. Spare me the childish analysis. And that's what makes you such a great doctor. 
I appreciate the recognition. Yes, I am a great doctor, but you know, that's never really been a secret. Well, you certainly don't believe in modesty. I think humility is overrated. So is sympathy. Oh, don't get me wrong. I do not feel sorry for you. Good. Well, since you've agreed to keep quiet about what happened this afternoon, I can tell you that you don't have to spend the rest of the day worrying that I'm going to accidentally kill your boyfriend when I crack open his skull. Oh, great. And you know what? Thank you. Thank you for that mental image. It's lovely. But here's something that you don't know. Noah's not my boyfriend anymore. So you don't have to worry about me getting in your way today or ever again. I hope it made your day. The two of you broke up? Yes. After you learned that we were staying in Oakdale. That's right. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. You barely gave that guy room to breathe. He felt like he had to take care of you most of the time. Your guilt overwhelmed him. He said that? He didn't have to. It was obvious. You know, I think you should leave now. Oh, did I hit a nerve? I don't think you have any right to talk about a relationship that you know nothing about. I know that he wanted you to leave him alone. What I don't know is what took him so long to finally put himself first. You know what? This was my decision. I ended this relationship. Now get out of my house. I've been pushed around enough for one day, Mr. Snyder. I would advise you to take one very big step back.